Hi everybody, so for the last part of our tour here through geometry, we're going to be looking at this concept of what are known as transformations. Now I think many of you have seen this idea of transformations before. It's a relatively minor topic in geometry, but still has some relevance here. So at its core, if you think about a transformation, transformation all really is is just some depth change to the plane here. Now the change we're going to be looking at, it can be whatever you want here. It could be some sort of stretching. It could be shrinking. It could be a movement. It could be a change in orientations or even a zero change. You can have a zero transformations here. The idea is that it's just going to be some change to the plane, and we're going to be looking at it both algebraically and also geometrically here. Now, speaking of geometrically, you'll see that I have a sketch of what appears to be some object here. Now, I know that at this point, I feel that most of you are probably being kind of bored at home. You're wasting times so you can just walk outside freely here. So, you know, this is something that I recall from earlier uh, in my life where I had where I was able to stay at a cabin nearby uh, a lake. So what we have here is a sketch of this cabin here. Now, I'm not particularly good at sketching things, so you know I'm gonna try to keep everything simple here. So with our cabin here, you'll see that I've gotten rid of very extraneous things like a chimney, windows, or even a door. Who, cause who needs a door, right? So we have ourselves this here, and then we have ourselves the lake here. So here's gonna be our lake. And then we wanna determine what we're gonna see in the lake here. Now, considering what's going on here, it makes sense that if this is the border of the lake here between the upper portion of the cabin itself and the lake, it makes sense for us to think of this here as some sort of reflection, right? We're going to see a reflection of this reflected down into the lake here. So it's going to look something like, so, you know, I guess we can go ahead and sketch this out here. Now, our intuition tells us that it's going to look something like this, right? So note that in this situation, we have this idea of what is known as a reflection here. So let me go ahead and label the points here so we can see these a little bit better. I'm going to call these points here A, B, C, D, and E here. So these are just, you know, we can think of this as a pentagon It's uh, in this case here. So we note that this is our original cabin here, whereas this is going to be what you see in the lake here. So we give that a specific name here. If we look at the definitions here, we refer to that as what is known as image and pre-image here. So this portion down here, what you see in the lake is known as the image, whereas up here is the pre-image, the original object being transformed here. So we have this sort of thing. Everything in black here is going to be our pre-image. Everything in blue here is going to be the image after we finish our transformation here. Furthermore, we also note, if we look back at our picture here, we see that, for instance, right, we see that B ends up down here. It kind of makes sense that B ends up down here. Now, of course, I don't want to use the same B as it is the same as this B up here because then that leads to confusion. So, but I still want to note the fact that it is connected to B in some way. So I'm going to call this B prime here. I'm going to put a little uh, hatch mark on the side. Same thing is going to be true for C prime and D prime here. So we use this idea of what we have B prime, C prime, and D prime here. Note those are the images, and then we have the pre-image. You'll note that our uh, notation actually looks something like that here. So we can see that in our notation, we have several things that are going to note here, right? So of course we have in this case here we have our pre our, sorry this is our image here my fault so we can see that a prime is going to be our image here and we have in black here this here is going to be our pre-image and we note that in this situation we have an r and k here i forgot to label on this uh, picture here this is k this is our line k here um, this r here as you can tell this is going to be a reflection this tells us a reflection over line k so uh, I think you can see here this portion down here, this is going to be our mirror here. This is going to represent, uh, reflect over what? Right? So basically what we have here is just notation that we're going to be using to determine what's going on here. Now if we look back at this, right? We noted that I you did this B, C, and D here. So why do this? Like for instance, how did I know that point B was here and not for, so for instance further out? Or what if B were over here, right? Why do we do this? Now, one of the things about reflections that I'm sure that you all remember here, or have us intuited, is the fact that reflections are, uh, preserve distance. That is, whatever distances occur here, so for instance, something like this, is going to be preserved over here as well. So we seem to have this sort of thing going on here. Indeed, we can see that for B to B prime here, the most important part is that these two things are the same, so A, B, and A prime, B prime are the same here. And also, the fact that we have a perpendicularity here, right? These look like right angles, and these are indeed right angles for this. I should have uh, mentioned that to here, I apologize. But we can also mention that here as well. We can see that that's the case like this. So we can see that in this case, from B to B prime here, we seem to have this point somewhere in between. 
And also, we know that this line K here appears to be, you know, something about B to B prime here. This line K appears to split it in half, and also is a right angle here. Furthermore, we know that with C prime, C to C prime here as well, we can do much the same thing, right? If we were to connect C to C prime here, oops, there we go, we can see that yet again we have this sort of thing, and we have a right angle like so, okay? So note that in each of these situations, if we connect the point to its image, we're going to end up with a perpendicular bisector here. This line K is a perpendicular bisector. So that actually gives us something very important here. So let me move on to this. So we can use this to define the concept of what is known as a reflection in the plane over a given line K here. We note that in this situation, as long as this point here is like this, we have something like this here. We have this perpendicular bisector business, and we're going to talk about that. Now, note that, unfortunately, this doesn't cover everything, right? It doesn't really cover B, C, and D, but it doesn't cover A and E. Note that the point A and E, where are they? Well, I mean, your intuition tells you that if you have point A, and a point A is at this corner and also lying on the line K here, point A should remain exactly where it is, right? Because it's on the mirror. If you were to fold this over the line K here, this point A doesn't move. So this point A lies on the mirror here and doesn't change. In particular, we note that A and A prime should be exactly the same here. Similarly, E and E prime, E, right, after a reflection of the line K, should yield us E prime as well. But it's going to be at the same point because they're on the line itself. So that actually gives us this here. So that second case we were talking about here, if P is on line K, then P prime is equal to P. That is, P is its own image here, right? So in this case here, we can reflect. If you're reflecting over a line and your point is on the line to start, then you're going to be its own image. However, P is not on line K, and this is the most important part, then P prime is defined such that K is the perpendicular bisector of P, P prime. So basically, the idea behind this is that we come up with a def we come up with the location of the image here such that if you were to connect the pre-image to the image here, if you were to connect these two, the line of reflection here acts as the perpendicular bisector of that segment here. So we have this sort of thing going on, right? The reason D prime is down here is because this line K, this black line here, is the perpendicular bisector of the segment that we drew. So if D is over here, if D prime doesn't exist yet, we know that we're going to have to create a perpendicular line to the mirror and continue it, and also make sure such that the same, dis the same distance is preserved here. So we have this sort of setup here. What we have with this here is sort of a formal definition of the idea of a reflection here. And we can see that these two cases will cover everything here.